Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 6. <clears throat> I'm sure you had a beautiful day. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Praise God. Verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. He said, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. <clears throat> Would you turn to Psalm 127? Psalm 127. <clears throat> I'm reading from verse 1. Have you found it? Good. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wake it, but in vain. I'll read it again. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. He didn't say they will not build. He said, but they are laboring in vain. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wake it, but in vain. It is not by might, it is not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. We are children of God. And as children of God, we are different from the world. The world has its ways. But we do not belong to the world. We have been called out of the world. We are born again. We belong in the kingdom of God. We have our own principles of life. Our lives are not empty. There's a move of God's spirit in his church that makes the church different from the rest of the world. He said, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that he should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We've been called out of darkness to show forth the praises of God. The Bible says for us to declare his virtues and perfections. He has brought us into a large place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He has brought us into a large place. We have arrived in the realm of God's spirit. Because he's brought us here. Amen. He's brought us here. We're different from the world. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my word. And I'll pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of children the world cannot receive, because it's yet in not, neither know it in. But you know him. Hallelujah. Then he said to them, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. But thanks be to God, today he is already in us. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, but you know him. That's the spirit of God. That's the Holy Ghost. He said, I'll pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. He is the one in charge of the church today. And because he lives in us, with us nothing can be impossible. Say amen. amen. I'd like to read again from Exodus, 14th chapter. <clears throat> and I'd like to read a little faster, so I hope you'd follow very quickly. A beautiful story. From verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihai Hirot, between Migdol and the sea over against Be'er Zephon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness had shut them in. 
And I will hug in Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. And they did so. <clears throat> and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this, that we have let the let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord had in the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an eye hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army. And overtook them and camping by the sea beside by high Herod before Beersiphon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. That's verse 10. And they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dared thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Say it, come on. Fear ye not. Say it again. Fear ye not. <coughs> Say it again. Fear ye not. Hallelujah. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Hallelujah. Glory. He said, For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. That touches me. Standing before an invading force, the strongest in the world at the time. This was the world power of the day. The strongest army on the face of the earth. They hadn't lost a battle, not once. They had destroyed nations and taken their kings captive. Pharaoh didn't just send a group of his army. He sent all of them. He released all his chariots because this was something he wanted to do for all the earth to know about. Because Israel grew up in Egypt and became enslaved. But Pharaoh was going to get honored to get a whole nation in the bondage. It was a glorious hour for Pharaoh. Nobody wanted to miss this. And so he got his people together. And they went. The best chariots of Egypt were there. All of his army. Went after the children of Israel. There was no way for them. But Moses, being the man that he was. A man who had known the spirit of God. One who had touched God, who had been in the presence of God, who had known what it was to be there when nobody else was there in the presence of God. You know, Jesus said, pray to your father who sees in secret and the father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. He's the one that sees in secret when nobody else is there. But when he's going to reward you, he will do it upon me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he was watching all this. And Moses cried unto the Lord. Watch this. <clears throat> Verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Why do you cry to me now? This is not the time to cry to me now. I don't know where you are in your life. To understand the mysteries of God. We have moved from the rod to the word. Are you hearing this? God said to Moses. 
With this rod, you will perform miracles. But Joshua didn't need the rod. God said to Joshua, Every place that the soul of your feet shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. All you need is step your foot there, and it's all yours. He said, No man shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. All you need is a step there. And Jesus came and said, You don't even need to step there. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, You can have what you say. <laughs> Glory to God. The revelation has moved from the rod to the word. Hallelujah. And things have changed. Can you say amen? amen? But here the principle is the same. God said to Moses, Why do you cry to me now? God said, Lift, he said, first of all, he said, Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. My people don't stop. That's what he's saying. He's letting Moses understand the move of God's spirit. We don't stop when we come into this arena. In this area of life, we don't stop. We don't run away. We don't retreat. We don't submit. He said, Moses, don't cry now. Oh, hallelujah. The psalmist said, our soul is escaped. He said, the net is broken. And we are gone. Hallelujah. It's broken. Oh, praise God. Our soul is escaped as a bird. The net is broken. And we are escaped. And you know what? We've come back. We escaped to go learn it, learn the word, and then we came back. You didn't catch that. Moses escaped from Egypt. The net was broken and he was gone. And then he heard the word of God in the wilderness. At the backside of the desert, God talked to him. He went back to Egypt. From where he had escaped. We only escape to go learn the word of God. When we get it, we come back. Hallelujah. He said, our soul is escaped. The net is broken. And we are gone. But we've come back. Hallelujah. Because God said, go back to Egypt. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. It's the same thing, you know, when God brings you out of that devil's territory. He fills you with his spirit, gives you his word, and sends you back to deliver others from the hand of the devil. He said to Saul of Tarsus, I'm sending you to go to the Gentiles, turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God. There was where he was. God brought him out and sent him back. Hallelujah. Oh, I like this. Verse 15 again. The Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. This is one of the most beautiful portions of the Bible. When you see it for yourself. That God didn't say, I will divide it. God told a man to divide the sea. God said to him, stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. He said, lift up your rod and stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. God didn't say, I will divide it. He gave that responsibility to Moses. God wants you as his partner. That's why he said, don't let anything happen to you. Don't sit down there. Oh. Oh, glory. Who am I talking to now? Listen. Don't sit down there. 
and expect a miracle. Does that shock you? Don't expect a miracle. Perform a miracle. Perform a miracle. Don't sit down there expecting it. Do it. We are moving in the spirit. We are refusing to be victims. Are you hearing me? Refusing to be victims. Refusing to sit down there expecting something to turn up. God said to Moses, why do you cry to me now? Stretch your hand. All the Moses was expecting a miracle. He said, stand still and expect a miracle. That's what he said. But then he said the right thing. He said, the Egyptians that you see today, oh, hallelujah, you shall see them again no more forever. He said, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. But he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. God said, Moses, uh -uh, don't stand still. More glory to God. He said, don't sit there expecting, perform a miracle. We are sons of God. We are not ordinary people. We are born again. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. And all things are of God. Hallelujah. All these new things are of God. This new creation is of God. We are victors in Christ Jesus. Whatsoever is born of God. Overcometh the world. Whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is born of God. Overcometh the world. I don't know what you are dealing with in your life. I don't know what you're facing in your life. Maybe there's a loved one who's sick or diseased or afflicted. What are you going to do? You say, we've been praying. God is saying to you today, perform a miracle. You say, I've been expecting something to happen. God is saying, I've been expecting you to do something. He said, Moses, why do you cry to me now? Why now? Stretch your hand over the water. Divide it. We are partners with God. Paul said we are workers together with God. This is the reason he sent the Holy Ghost. To come and live in us. So that our lives can be fully supernatural. We are partakers of the divine nature. In other words, we are participating in the divine nature. We are not victims. We are victors. Can you say amen? amen? He says in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You can turn around the circumstances of your life. All you need is to understand the principle of the word of God. You can actually turn the circumstances of your life around. Don't wait there. Don't expect something to turn up. Do something. Do it and call it so. The problem is a lot of people have never understood that the Holy Ghost has come to be with us. With the Holy Ghost we cannot fail. With the Holy Ghost we cannot lose. It has become absolutely impossible for us to lose with the Holy Ghost. The only reason a Christian can lose or fail is when you neglect the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When you neglect the Holy Ghost, you can lose, you can fail a thousand times. But when you work with Him, Hallelujah, you will never fail. Praise God. Oh, Hallelujah. I want you to see this. <clears throat> Still in the same chapter. Now I'm reading from verse 16. But leave thou by rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. And they shall follow them. Copycats, you know. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, upon all his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. 
when I'm done with Pharaoh. <laughs> Doesn't it sound like that in your Bible? <laughs> Verse 19. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. It came to pass, it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and a darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the, all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea. Ooh, do I like this? Watch it. Verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord. See, always Moses and the Lord. Can you get it? Moses and the Lord. Partners. Making your partner in your business. Making your partner in your family. Making your partner. And see what happens in your life. Hallelujah. Watch this now. Look at this. Where are we? Verse 21. <clears throat> Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. Listen, you're not talking of some little river. It wasn't a little pond. We're talking of the Red Sea. You know what the sea is? We're talking of the Red Sea. The sea. Not a swimming pool. <laughs> the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strongest wind all that night and make the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. Brother, this is a fact. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued. I think they were really crazy. They pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. They also went into the sea. <laughs> Pharaoh. Even all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass. That in the morning watch. Listen, it's a long distance, you understand? Long, long distance. The Bible says, Do not fret when you see the wicked prospering. They said the righteous prospers. The wicked prospers also. That means both of them are walking in the sea on dry ground. Just wait a little more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just wait a little more. You're going to turn back and they'll not be there. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 24, it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked on to the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host. Of... <laughs> he troubled them. Do you understand? Watch, this is nice. And to... Ooh, hey, listen. The chariots went right into the, into the, the sea, the midst of the sea on dry ground. So they were driving and the horses were pulling these chariots. So watch this. And... Verse 25, it says, God took off their chariot wheels. You know why? He don't want anybody to escape. By the time he lets the water loose, he doesn't want anybody to run out. He took off their chariot wheels. <laughs> ah, I get it. He took off the chariot wheels that had driven them heavily. I mean, no more wheels now. So that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord find it for them. It's too late now. And the Lord, verse 26, said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand. Can you see? Always it's the Lord and Moses. If he wants to come right again, he can't do it until Moses does it. Because it was Moses who opened it in the first place. So he says, Moses, come on, stretch your hand over the sea again so that the waters can come together and we can catch all them Egyptians. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 26. And the Lord said unto Moses, Straight out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remains not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. 
And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Hallelujah! You and God are partners. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says God is faithful. By whom you were called, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9, by whom you were called into fellowship with his son Jesus. That means into partnership with his son Jesus. For his partners. He says, I'll pray the Father. And he shall give you another comfort. One that is called to go alongside. That's the meaning of the word from which comfort was translated. One called to go with you. That's the Holy Ghost. You are not fully dressed without the Holy Ghost. Don't you go out. Are you hearing me? You're not ready until you're moving with him. You're not ready. Oh, glory to his name for it. <clears throat> we have come to the kingdom at the right time. Oh, the Spirit of God is in charge of the church today. The anointing of that Spirit is upon us as children of God. We are anointed. And by that anointing, we cannot lose. We cannot fail. You only fail or lose or get defeated when you get out from that anointing. But we are to move with the Spirit of God. We are to walk with the Spirit of God. He said, except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wicked, but in vain. He says, Moses stretched his hand over the sea. And God caused the strongest wind to divide it. And wind is a type of the Spirit of God. It was Moses doing what God asked him to do. And the Spirit of God present there, playing his own part. You cannot do it alone. Tell somebody you cannot do it alone. Say it again, you cannot do it alone. You know one of the problems that many people have is the fact that they have not known how to move with the Spirit of God. They have not known how to yield themselves to the Spirit of God. It's important for us to learn to respond to the Spirit. It's important for us to learn to be yielded. You know what it is to yield? If you take a metal and you bend it, it's, so, it's hard to bend it. Have you ever bent it and suddenly you got to a certain point and it was so easy, you just yielded? Have you ever seen that? Or you had something you were stretching and it was elastic and it came back. And you stretched it again and it came back. Then we have the limit of its elasticity. And then after that, it's its yielding point. It yields, it doesn't resist anymore. Do you understand? You stretch it and it doesn't come back anymore. Sometimes the Holy Ghost is trying to stretch us and we refuse to yield. Do you understand? He stretches you like this and then you come back to where you used to be. He stretches you again, you come back to where you used to be. Brother, you have to get to the yielding point. Stop being elastic with the Holy Ghost. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Get to the yielding point. Just go. Oh, hallelujah. Just go. Oh. Sometimes we're worshiping the Lord and praising Him. Have you ever found yourself yielding at that point? Some people think that it is effeminate to yield. Uh -uh, you're wrong. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. And because he has a soul, he'll always respond emotionally to anything that gets into him. When God gets to you, you'll respond. When he gets in your spirit, the spirit is the inner man. That's the hidden man of the heart. But a lot of times people allow themselves to only relate with God from the outward man, from the flesh. They praise Him. They lift their hands. By their posing for the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. Sometimes you say, lift your hands, they go like this, elasticity, and they bring them back down. They can't keep them up. 
But there are times, brother, when they, you, you just can't bring them down. Every time you take them down, they seem to go up. Before you know it, they just go up again. Hallelujah. Sometimes you worship the Lord and those tears start coming down. Not tears of sorrow. You are overwhelmed by the Spirit of God. That's where you need to get to. Do we need to get there? Yes, that's the yielding point. When you yield, learn to yield. Because when you yield to the spirits, you know the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 26, Likewise the spirit helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what to pray for as we ought. Likewise the spirit himself helpeth our limitations, he says. He helps our weaknesses. The Holy Ghost helps our weaknesses. We're praying about something. We want to make a change. We want to effect a change. It's our responsibility to effect a change. Area where we need a change. Don't cry, oh God, change things. Jesus said, "Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And when he said "Ye shall receive power, he wasn't talking about authority this time. He said "Ye shall receive dynamis. That is the dynamic ability to cause changes. That's what power is. He said, you shall receive the dynamic ability to cause changes when you receive the Holy Ghost. So when you receive the Holy Ghost, you actually receive the dynamic ability to cause changes. That's the ability to effect changes. You received it when the Holy Ghost came to live in you. But sometimes you do not know how to effect the change. Please turn this tape over for the continuation of this message. But we're learning. Can you say amen? We're learning. He said, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. Yes. This shall be written for the last generation. Praise God. And it's happening today. He's building up Zion. He's gathering together the outcasts of Israel. Can you say amen? Oh, hallelujah. Yes. It's a spirit's work. Likewise, the Spirit Himself help with our infirmities. For we know not what to pray for as we ought. For the Spirit prays for us. He intercedes for us with groanings that cannot be opened. Groanings with each sides that do not come out in articulate speech. So we find ourselves crying, these tears coming down our eyes. Sometimes the words at this time don't come out so loud except when the Spirit puts the word of prophecy in your mouth to speak it out. Or he puts the word of praise in your mouth to speak it out. You want to effect the change? This is it. Let me show it to you. Psalm 126. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Are you there? Oh, glory. <laughs> Woo! I want to read from verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. 1, 2, 6, Psalm 1, 2, 6, verse 1. Are you there now? When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. You know when the miracle takes place, you're like a dreamer. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. It's wonderful to have a miracle. Oh, we're going to put that girl on, 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 on atmosphere for miracles. So when they gave their testimony at the church in worry, she was beaming with smiles all the time. I saw the tape all the time she was smiling. Think about it. A few days earlier, what kind of a smile would she have? She had become a hopeless invalid from a motor accident. She couldn't walk. And now in church, she's standing. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Glory to his name forever. Wow. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. <laughs> And our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for them. Yeah, brother. Yeah. Yeah. 
a mouth filled with laughter, a tongue with singing. When the world looks at us and says, mm, the Lord has done great things for them. Yeah, the Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Then somebody says, turn again our captivity, O Lord, at the streams in the south. Somebody says, oh, do it for us. Please turn the tape over for the continuation of this message. If it tells you how it was done for them who were rejoicing, verses 1, 2, 3. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. If you sow in tears, you shall reap in joy. Mm. Are you catching this? They that sow in tears shall reap in joy oh this has been my life's experience every time when i'm alone with god and i pray and then those tears come down my eyes and i'm there praying to god from the depths of my soul i remember the words of jesus he said a father who sees in secret shall reward thee openly amen they that sow in tears shall reap in joy they are sowing in tears no, he's not talking about tears out of sorrow. Uh-uh. He's not talking about tears out of self-pity. No, no. Tears that come by the power of the Holy Ghost. Because the Spirit overshadows you. Overwhelms you. Then you begin to sow the words of faith. The words of power. As you release them by the faith of God. Because you're overwhelmed by God's Spirit. And these words are coming out. You are sowing in tears. Look at it again here. He that goeth forth and weepeth. Have you ever wept for joy? That's what he's talking about. He says, weeping may enjoy for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. This kind of weeping is not the weeping because somebody hits you or because you lost money. No, not tears out of self-pity. These are tears. From one that's overwhelmed by God's spirit. Overwhelmed by God's spirit. He's got something he wants to deal with. He's got something that he wants to change. He wants to effect a change. Somewhere. Maybe in his job. Maybe in his finances. And he's there in the presence of God. And the spirit takes over. When the spirit moves upon him. There's a change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to his holy name for it. Look at this. He that goeth for them weep it. Carrying, bearing precious seed. Precious seed is the seed of the word of God. Hallelujah. He's going, he's going, bearing precious seed. He's taking the seeds with him. I'm going to weep. I'm going to weep in the presence of God. I'm not going to weep out of pain. No. I'm going to just let the tears of the spirit flow down my cheeks. He takes the word with you. I love what the prophet said. He said, take with you words. Hallelujah. Take with you words and offer the cards of your lips. Hallelujah. Oh, offer the cards of your lips. Take words with you. Take words with you. Do you remember what he said? Take words with you. Take words with you. Take them with you. And then begin praying. See, the different kinds of prayer. Now, I, I'm not just talking about the scriptural prayers here. I'm talking about different kinds of prayers. There are prayers that don't work. Lip service prayer. It's not how much you talk. It's where the prayer is coming from. Is the prayer coming from man's spirit or coming from man's lips? The one that's coming from the man's lips don't work. The one that's coming from the man's spirit. What do I mean by that? The inner most being, you speak the word of faith. Faith is a response of the human spirit to the word of God. That's why it works. Hallelujah. Look at this. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless, <laughs> unfailingly, doubtless, come again with rejoicing. Bringing his sheaves with you. What a harvest. Can you say amen? What a harvest. 
You saw him praying. You saw him praying. He was praying. You almost couldn't hear his voice. Think about Hannah in the Bible. Her lips were moving, but her words are not heard. Eli looked at her. Tears are coming down her cheeks. And then the, the priest looked at her and said, Woman, aren't you tired of your drunkenness? Oh, she cleaned out those eyes and looked up. And she said, Sir, these are not the words of a drunken woman. I'm pouring out my heart before the Lord. Oh, may the Lord grant you whatever you want from him. And she said, Amen, and went on praying. Then she left there. She had poured out her heart. Faith had come. She was not praying prayers of self-pity. Faith had come. Oh, glory. Faith had come. What is your life like? God does great things. He's working on your behalf. You will show up in places where you didn't go. You'll be amazed. That's happened to me several times. I said, you will show up in places that you didn't go. They'll tell you they saw you there. And you were not there. For good, not for evil. Come on, say amen. Yeah. I'll tell you, you told the story. He wanted to build a church in this little town. And the whole town had been wholly given to uh, uh, a guardian guard. An evil spirit. But they didn't know it was an evil spirit. They were all worshiping that guardian guard. And the priest of that, of that uh, guard was there. And so when he came and wanted to start a church, they said, no, we've been here many, many years before you. So we cannot let you have a church in this place. He insisted he had rights to have a church in that place. And they said, no. Well, they said, we're going to chase you out of town and burn your tent church. He was using an old tent for a church. And they said, we're going to burn it up and we'll run you out of town. So they gave him a certain number of days to beat. And he didn't. He was praying and praying and praying and praying and calling on God. Hallelujah. Then the priests came to him. The priests of that shine. They came to him and they said, we'll strike a deal. There's a woman who's dying. She's been so sick. Now she's paralyzed, totally paralyzed. And she's sick and dying. The husband is a drunkard. So there's no hope from the husband. And in that condition, she had a baby. So... Her baby is not well fed and she's in such a terrible condition and she's so dead and she's in a mess. They said, if your Jesus can heal that woman, who we'll believe you? And then you can have the church. <laughs> Praise God. So he came, got some of the brethren together, they cleaned out the woman's place and arranged things in the house, cleared it out and made food for her. They gave him about 40 days or so, a month, really. They gave him one month. Within which his Jesus was to perform. So he began to preach to the woman, and the woman didn't make things better. She said, I would rather die. <laughs> oh, 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 what am I going to do? She said, I'd rather die. And the man, please, you've got to believe in Jesus. Well, you know, two reasons now. He wanted the woman healed, all right, but um, there's an ultimatum, one bond. So the woman didn't believe. For a while, he was trying and trying and trying. The days were running. So one morning, he went to pray in the church. While he was praying and praying and praying and praying, suddenly he was in a trance. And a big snake came into the house with a human head. He said it was a beautiful snake. So the snake came in, and he was surprised to see the snake come in. But with a human head. So while he was looking at the snake, the snake spoke up. He said, You have come here to trouble me. Now I'm going to kill you. You want to stop my people from serving me. I'm going to kill you. And then leaped up upon him. And when that happened to him, he began to struggle and fight with the snake. It was a trap to him. And he was fighting, fighting with the snake until finally he was able to get the snake off of him and hit him on the ground and smash the head of the snake. Then in the trance of so many people who had come to see him and he carried the snake and came out to meet them and said, look at what you've all been serving all these years. You've not been serving God, you've been serving these devil. And then suddenly he came back from the trance. And he was so glad to say, God, he was praying and he was glad about it. But you see, he had to pray. You understand? So, that morning, later in the morning, 
while he was praying with some other brethren, because the time was running out, he heard a loud noise. People were coming from a distance. And someone ran to him and said, Pastor, run away, run away. The people are coming for you. He wanted to run. Then the Spirit said, don't you ever run from the devil. So he stopped and he was waiting. Well, this is the day. They're coming to burn out the church and run us out of town. But the people came. As they were coming closer, he began to notice a woman who was carrying a baby. And while he was looking, am I seeing right? The woman seemed to resemble that dear lady who had been paralyzed in that little hut with her baby. No, 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 it cannot be real, he said. And as he was looking, they were coming closer. Then the woman yelled out, Pastor, thank you, Pastor, thank you, thank you, see I'm here, see I'm here. And he was wondering what happened. And this large crowd of people came with her, rejoicing. Then she said, Pastor, thank you for coming to my house at 2 a.m. in the morning. And Pastor said, no, I didn't come to your house. Oh, you came. 2 a.m. You came and you said to me, woman, in the name of Jesus, rise up. Hallelujah. Give a lot of big hand, everybody. Praise God. No, he said, I didn't come to your house. No, I didn't come to your house. Oh, yes, Pastor, you came. I heard your voice. I saw you there. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Ghost takes up our form and our shape and sticks in our voice sometimes. He said, woman, in the name of Jesus, rise up. He said, when you said it, I got up. Now look at me. Thank you for coming to my house. And they interrupted him and they were all dancing and shouting and shouting and shouting. Praise in God. The miracle was there and it could not be denied. They said, now you can have your church. And then they went to the place where the shrine used to be. And gave him the land and they destroyed the shrine and said, you can build the church right here. And he built the church right there. Come on, give her a hand. Hallelujah. Well, he, he didn't go there. But you see, God works with us. Jesus said, I'll pray the Father, and he shall send you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. This Holy Ghost. He's the only one that appears in different forms. He can come with your face and lift some up. And he's done that so many times. Sometimes I say something to some people, they hear something totally different. But God said to them. But because I understand the move of God's Spirit, I do not give Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes I tell someone who has cancer, I say in the name of Jesus, you that has cancer, you're healed. Another one who has an ear, he hears the same person. But what he hears is not cancer. He hears you that has an ear, you're healed. And then when they will give the testimony, somebody sits in there, Pastor didn't say in the ear, in the cancer. Because he don't understand nothing, you see. But we know the move of God's spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to his holy name. He said, open your mouth and I will feel it. How can you explain it? When standing before you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, go and do great things. You will prevail everywhere you go. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will not fall a victim, but you'll be a victor continually. In the name of the Lord Jesus, prosperity is at work in you, success is at work in you, victory is at work in you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will remain in health continually. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You get stronger and stronger every day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
the hand of God is mighty in your life. Yes. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. You are favored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to his holy name. You may be seated. Oh, hallelujah. God has the right people to help you. At the right time and at the right place. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Everywhere you go, favor will go with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Yes. Oh, the anointing is working on you. It's working on you tonight. I said that anointing is working on you tonight. The arrow that flies by day will not come to you. The terror by night will not come to you. But your God will stand for you continually. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will continue to be a surprise to the world. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Oh, Put your hands toward the heaven, just worship him. Worship him. Glory, worship him. 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 Oh, hallelujah. The one who keeps him does not sleep, he does not slumber. Oh, and the mountains are round about Jerusalem. So the Lord is coming round about them that fear him. The Lord is with you. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I pray for you. You are making progress by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, you are making progress. There is increase for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, there is promotion for you. You are promoted in Jesus' name. You are moved forward in Jesus' name. You are favored. You are favored. You are favored. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That blessing is yours. Amen. That blessing is yours. It will follow you all your days. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Say I'm blessed. Say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I am favored. I am blessed. I am blessed. Now look around you. Say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You're blessed. Hallelujah. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. Come on, shout. 